Hey there guys! Welcome back, my name is Liz, my company is Hello from Liz Matthews, and today I am happy to bring you a long promised overdue paperweight tutorial. Um, you are in my studio today, this is going to be a very different video than my traditional floss tube video. There's not going to be a lot of chit chat, a lot of catching up with me, although I do love to do that with you. Hop over to my previous and upcoming, depending on when you're watching this, floss tube videos to get to know me a little bit and to see what I do here in the needlework community. Today though is dedicated to making these paperweights which I first showed and shared with you a couple months ago when I put out the butterfly cloche pattern. This I designed last summer and in addition to the sampler version you will see in the pictures I also had single butterflies under paperweights which I thought were so cool because this whole piece is meant to be kind of specimen like and putting them under glass is even more specimen like. So I shared these with you when I released that video and um, several of you were interested in how I made those and I promised this tutorial long ago. Thank you for hanging in there you guys. I am going to show you how I made these today. This is not a um, complicated project. Here's a close up of that guy. These are just two excerpts from that pattern. Um, this is not a complicated project. It'll probably go pretty quick. I will be making one with you today. So I'm sorry that I don't have like a downward facing camera setup. There will probably be quite a bit of this video that I'm looking down cutting, but bear with me. Um, and by the end, I hope that you leave feeling confident in how you can make your own paperweights. I think this design or this FFO technique, as I should say, fully finished object technique, lends itself well to so many different cross stitch patterns. It doesn't have to be a butterfly. You don't have to be going for the specimen look. Use it any way you like. I am also definitely not the first person to do this. I was at StitchCon over the summer and they have a freebie table and I was looking through those and I think I found a chart from the 80s that also incorporated that so not the first person to do it um hopefully not the last hopefully you guys will do it and please know that I have not done this since I did these a year ago so if I seem a little rusty it's because I'm figuring it out as I go um updating some things I am going to show you how to do things a little bit differently I think better if I'm being honest but hey that's what happens every time you do something so I'm gonna real quick give you an overview of what these are I'm gonna tell you the supplies you need and then we're gonna get started so this is the glass paperweight mine is vintage I found it in an antique store what you have under the glass is my actual cross stitching the glass is what nearly an inch thick and on the back I have felt so that when you put it on a table, it doesn't scratch. And it also protects the cross stitching, which is sandwiched in between the felt and the glass. I did the same thing for this guy. The paperweight shape is a little bit different, but it's the same basic idea. Hello. Um, the felt is back there and you can see what I did. Now, when I made these, I used hot glue. To attach everything and I am updating that to a different type of glue because although it is the most quick and certainly do that if you would like to um, I think it will be a little bit cleaner doing a different style so that's what I'm going to show you today uh, did I mention that I am in no way a finisher I am so thankful finishers exist because they are not me so that is an up-close breakdown of what we're going to be doing today so as I mentioned, these are antique paperweights. I find myself antiquing quite a bit. I decorate my house in antiques. It's one of my mom and my favorite pastimes. So that is how I have picked up a collection of glass paperweights I'm gonna show you. I am going to do some research just as soon as I finish filming this and it's uploading to see if I can't find a good source for you for paperweights. My mom did just purchase the paperweight for me from 
Etsy. So do a quick search glass paperweight. Let me show you what I have found and plan to use in the future. You can kind of see all the different styles that paperweights come in. This is what she just found for me online and ordered. I've never seen this style before, so she wanted me to have it. I'm, I'm so appreciated. I think it's just beautiful, and actually I hate to take it apart. So that's what that one looks like. You have the big dome here. It's flat and then a little raised edge right there. This is the one we're going to be finishing today. I've never seen one like this. Can you see that shape? It's like a flower shape. I've already removed the center, so this is ready to use. This is, again, antique, and you can see it's flawed. See that? So, you know, you have to be willing to work with those pieces of charm if you're doing antique paperweights. This is another flower-shaped paperweight. However, this one is flat, very similar to these finished pieces, except just a different shape, thick, solid glass. And then I have two that are a little bit different, but you can also find them in stores. I have never finished these style paperweights. So when I tell you my suggestions for these, keep in mind, they are um, untried suggestions, okay? So what's different about these guys is that these are not flat on the back. They are impressed. Can you see that? While these are flat on the back, you have to affix your stitching in a con vex manner. And I don't exactly know how I would do that. I can give you recommendations, which I will at the end but they are a little different along with this one. I saw many of these style paperweights antiquing. I think it was probably like a trendy 70s thing, but the thing is, this is all hollow. So say you're out and about antiquing and you find a paperweight. What you want to look for is, ideally, it's, it's like we're gonna go over today, just a thick slab of glass in good conditions, no sharp edges, don't cut yourself, don't hurt yourself. Um, but what you'll do is you'll pull up the edge and see if you can kind of remove the backing, which you can on this one, and you can on this one as well. But when you remove the backing on this one, uh, I wanna show you, because I've done this already. What you see is, this is three-dimensional, obviously, they wanted to fit the beads but this whole thing is hollow. So it makes it a little, a little trickier. So if possible, I would suggest going with like a thick slab of glass rather than a hollow bubble. Um, you can work with it, you can make it work, and I'll show you my best guesses, but that's what I would look for out and about just because it's what I can tell you about finishing myself. So those are the pieces that I have picked up. The one that we are going to be using today, again, is this one. It is flat backed and that's what we're going to work with. So here we go with the list of supplies. That's what I want to show you. You will need a paperweight. You will need some sort of stitching. I really quickly stitched up a single flower motif from my my home in the garden pattern that I released a while ago. I thought it was sweet and quick and would fit beautifully in there. Also, look how like the size changes so much when you put it under glass. Isn't that funny? I mean, I guess that's exactly what glasses do, right? So anyway, I have my stitched piece, my paperweight. You are going to need felt in any color you choose. I had black on hand from other projects to protect the back. You are going to need a pair of scissors and glue. This is the glue that I am going to be using for this piece and um, that I, without having ever used it, <laughs> recommend. Um, I have really fallen for Aileen's fabric glue. I have used it for quite a few finishing pieces and really like it. So we're going to go with this glue today, but know that in the past I have used hot glue. It is quicker and has a hot glue look. I mean, you're familiar with hot glue, I'm sure. So um, that's what we're gonna need. 
not a lot of supplies are needed. It's really just a matter of gathering your paper weight. Now, what is really nice to have on hand is a photocopier. Completely unnecessary, but it's what I used. So um, just keep that in mind. And with that, we're gonna dive into this tutorial. I'm gonna make one of these for you. Please, I'm sure that I will leave something out, I am sure. But I'm gonna try to go through it all for you visually. I'm such a visual learner. I love watching people. Uh, but if I forget anything, put it in the comments below and I will try to get an answer in there. If you guys have done this before and you are watching me thinking, whoa, 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 you're making that too complicated. Do this instead. Drop those in the comments below too. I am not a finisher as I have said a million times. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to get the dimensions of your paperweight. I, okay, I need to pause this video and gather something. I left it in the photocopier. Sit tight. Okay, I'm back. And what do you know? I'm already backtracking. The very first step is if you have purchased a vintage paperweight that has something on the back, you need to remove that. And it's so easy, you guys. I have done this four or five times now. A lot of times a photo will be glued to the back and it might look really um challenging to get off it's not soak your piece with the picture on the back and anything that you can't remove by hand you know i would probably try to get this off as much by hand before soaking as possible but give it a soak in a bowl of soapy hot water 15 minutes it's all gonna dissolve and just you know be able to use your fingernail to scrape it right off that is what i did with this piece as well as the piece we're finishing today. Easy peasy. Okay, so once your pieces are clean and ready for assembly, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get some sort of tracing or outline or copy of the um, area that you need to cover. In my case, I am lucky to have a photocopier on hand. So what I did was pop this on the photocopier flat side down and make a copy. It is completely, this is extra, this is unnecessary that you do it on a photocopier. You can also trace it by hand, pen, pencil on a piece of paper. But what you're trying to do is get an outline of this ring because that is the area that we need to cover with felt to have a protective back. So my goal here is to have this whole circle, not the flowers, I'm gonna leave those out, covered with felt. So what I did was photocopy the back of it so that I can cut this out and then use this template to cut out my felt to be the perfect shape. I hope that makes sense because between the felt and the glass is going to go your cross-stitched piece. Okay, so there's the glass and sandwiched between the glass and the felt is your cross stitch. So that's why I made that photocopy. Let me give you another example and show you exactly what we're looking for. This piece that I've already cleaned um, and it's ready to go, I photocopied as well. And this was a great photocopy because what you see, let me hold this up is a really, really clear image of this outer line and also the indentation in the glass in which my cross-stitched piece is going to fit. So for this piece, I would, let me show you. Let me show you. I feel like sometimes my words don't work as well as my, you know, actually doing it, being a visual learner. Okay, so I'm cutting this out. Basic paper scissors. Okay, voila. This was the outer ring. And then you line it up to see, oh, this is too big, this is too small, this is just right, whatever. Now in this case, my outer ring is like as it should be a 100% match to my glass piece, which is a little bit big. I would like my felt 
which is what we're doing the template for right now, to be a little bit smaller than the glass, right? You want it to have like a, just a little bump in. You can see this is a, just a skosh smaller. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna trim that the tiniest bit smaller. And this is the beauty of having that photocopy. It's not a, it does not have to be a high quality photocopy, but if you decide that you do want to maybe take your paperweight to like Staples or, you know, wherever you can make photocopies, make a couple, know that you are going to need two to complete this project. So I made three copies of this, one that I could just show you and keep, and then two working copies, if you will. Okay, so I just trimmed that down by, you know, that much. And now I'm gonna realign it. And I really, really like that fit. And that will now be the template that I use for my felt. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. And I'm gonna grab my second working copy because while I'm cutting out templates, I'm also going to cut the inner ring, which shows where the depression, can you see that, in the glasses and where I would insert, inset, sandwich my cross stitch piece. So this inner ring right here. I cut that out real quick. You guys can watch. And this is why you make two working copies. My goal for my cross stitch piece, anytime I'm working with it, any finish I'm doing, is to have to cut it the least amount possible because that's scary, right? That's scary. So this making a template and testing a template out first works really well. So this is supposed to be my inset piece of paper and I'm gonna line it up here and see how it worked, which is actually really well too. Oh, technology. So you can see um, this fits pretty well in that depression. I'm gonna trim it a little bit here. You can see it's kind of a little large there. So just go back, trim a little more off until you have the perfect fit. Also. I know that I said we were doing that flower piece and we will, but it's easier to show what I mean on this larger piece. I'm sorry about that. You can watch me finish both. Um, okay, I just wanna make sure you can see. Okay, so I'm just trimming to perfection my template for my cross stitch piece and making sure it fits. Okay, that's, okay. I need to trim this side a little more. My goal when I'm doing this is to have that piece of paper template fit perfectly flatly in that depression and not be puffy or wavy at all. And you know, it's better to keep trimming and adjusting your template than your cross stitch piece, am I right? Okay, so that's pretty good. You can see that's in there. So imagine that's my cross stitch piece. This is my felt piece. We're gonna cut those out and assemble them and be done. So I'm gonna set these aside. We'll come back to this. And let me really quickly do my um, star piece, the piece that we are actually finishing. So this one was a little bit different. Um, there's not a double line. There's really just that like open negative space in there. So this is a case that having the paper to cut first is gonna be really good. Did I make three? Nope, I made one. What is the saying? Like, do as I say, not as I do. It's all right. That fits really well. Oh, technology. Okay, so that fits really well in there. That was lucky. So the next step in our, okay, imagine that I cut out the second one to um, the inner or the outer. Okay, 
So you have your sandwich of templates. Now you are going to make sure you grab the right template, the bigger template, line it up on your felt and cut it out. I'm going to do that down here. I'm sorry. I know this is going to be a lot of just watching me work. Um, you have options. You could certainly pin your piece of paper to your felt and cut it out. I am um, being lazy and I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to cut it out just by hand here. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm just cutting right around my paper template. If this makes you uneasy, certainly feel free to use straight pins and secure that on there. Okay. I'm not after perfection. It can be adjusted, but that will be the back piece for my paperweight. All right, let me real quick do my circle. I don't know why I ended up doing two whole finishes here. Whatever. I think that um, the oval one is just a little bit easier to show and it's what I have seen so much more frequently in antique stores. So I'm glad I'm doing it too actually because it's more likely what you may be able to find this um, kind of flowery, this one is far more rare and I've actually never seen another one so all right so there you go your felt template all right set your felt templates and your paperweights aside grabbing the paper template for the inside okay this is this is the more nerve-wracking part I will admit because this is when you cut your stitching um, you have a couple options for this. I didn't, I didn't pull this out and I didn't think about it before I should have. Um, you could certainly put some interfacing on the back of your stitching to make it more solid and paper-like. You could also grab a water soluble pen and trace your template around your stitching to make sure it is, um, nice and centered and exactly where you want it. And that is definitely what I should have done. Um, or yeah, I don't even want to say you can wing it. You can freehand it. Um, perhaps your stitching has a nice border around it and it's easy to get things lined up. Um, I think I am going to go ahead and give you a pause on this video so I can grab a water soluble pen or a, um, uh, dis um, disappearing ink. That's what I try to think of. Disappearing ink. Um, because it's, uh, like I said, it's scary to cut your stitching apart. So I'm going to give you a pause and grab a disappearing ink pen and be right back with you. Okie doke. I apologize that that was not in your supply list earlier. Uh, I think this will really be handy. And I probably used it originally, but it's been almost a year maybe more of them. So I apologize. Okay. So I am basically going to line my template up as I would like to around my stitching. Uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of use a light source to see where you like it lined up. So it's nice and centered. That is certainly what I am doing right now. I have a light shining behind me. Okay. All right, not moving. I am going to put this down. And all I'm doing is using my disappearing water soluble pen, tracing around, um, tracing around that template, and then I'm going to cut it out. I am actually tracing, and I'll show you in a second, not right on my template line, but just inside 
I'm just outside. I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second because I would like to avoid having to get my stitched piece wet and what I have on hand is a water soluble pen, not just a disappearing ink pen. So in an effort to not have to get this wet and iron it, I am going just outside my template. All right, of course it moved. So that when I cut that, I'm actually cutting the ink away. Can you see how the template is inside that line? moment of truth here we go do not go through this process on your own piece quite as quickly as mine like I, I look I look at this and I'm like okay I'm a little tiny bit off I wish I had scooted over a skosh do that do that for your piece for this I am just I'm wanting to share the process with you and I'm not being as perfect as I should be all right, so I'm going just inside the line. And the reason I'm doing that, we already went over, is because I'm cutting away that ink. And ideally, when I'm done cutting this piece, it will be smaller than my felt and able to sandwich in between the glass and the felt of my paperweight. Moment of truth. Oh, that's cute. All right. I do need to go back and trim. You can see I went a little um, egg shaped on this side. I need to cut that away a little bit more. This is a game of perfecting, but always error on the side of too big and able to adjust more rather than go for it and hope for the best, you know. All right. Better, better, better. Okay, so that is fitting nicely in there. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm going to grab my felt and sandwich that on there, in there, sandwich that in there. Look, that's great. And because of the whole, um, what, like the way these glass paperweights are made, it hides the edge pretty well. Like you have to look for the edge if you wanna see that sliver of black pop up. It's just, you know, the nature of a paperweight, so. I think that will be just fine. I'm very pleased with that. And what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna trim one more section I see. Again, take your time, do this as many times as you need. Do this more perfectly than I'm doing. Okay, so it's now time to affix your felt cross stitch paperweight sandwich. The whole idea with this and with the other two paperweights I made previously is that glue never touched my cross stitch. I just, I didn't want to do that. So all of the gluing happens between the felt and the glass paperweight, sandwiching your cross stitch in there glue free. So what I did when I did my butterflies was line everything up. I'm putting my felt on here. Get it just perfect. And then I went back and hot glued, you can see it, around the edges. You can see it like sandwiching out right there. And I think there's a better way to do that. I think the best way to do that is actually to use Aileen's. It's a quick drying fabric glue. It means that once we have it 
sandwiched and glued you have to let it sit for a little bit to dry but I think the trade-off is worth it so it might take a little more time but you can adjust if you need to within that first little bit of time and also you're not going to have hot glue strings and those marks that I showed you on the back of this guy right so how am I going to do this let me think let's think through this together okay I'm going to actually I am going to run a little bit of Aileen's all around the edge of my paperweight where I am gluing the felt and then I'm going to set this down on the table so you're not going to be able to see it again and I'm going to lay my stitched piece in there and then I am going to lay my felt piece on top gluing it that is when the gluing is actually going to happen and then I am I'll probably try to show you raise it up and try to show you but then I'm going to turn it over and set it on a table with the paperweight pressure um like pushing down on the glue to affix it and just let it set set until the glue dries how does that sound okay let me um I'm gonna do it we're gonna do it Okay, this is gonna be a lot of looking at my head, looking down, I apologize. Um, feel free to bump forward a little bit, but I wanna show you how I'm gonna glue it. So this is my Aileen's tacky glue, fabric glue, whatever. And, okay, I'm going, okay, you can see it. Right? along the edge sparingly but carefully there's not a lot there so I'm gonna put this down face down glue up I'm taking my stitched piece and carefully putting it right in the center not touching any glue and then I'm taking my cut out felt piece and I'm going to sandwich that cross stitch piece in between like so there's a little glue seeping out the sides that's okay Aileen's dries clear and we can always take it off with a razor blade can I hold this up for you all right that's what it looks like. You can see there is a little extra glue. No biggie. We can take care of that. But it is nice and sandwiched. My piece is in there. Yay! And I am just going to set this on my table. Felt side down using the weight of the paperweight. <laughs> Go figure. To um, kind of keep this in place and let it sit for a couple hours and then you are good to go and enjoy one thing you might find when you pick it up is if you have a little excess felt like I don't know say it was a little extra on this corner just you know take some scissors and trim it not about perfection it's not about perfection at all so I am very excited about this sweet little piece the Aileen's works really really quickly if I'm being honest um, it probably won't take long to dry at all so I'm just gonna leave this sitting here I will share it in my next floss tube video of course I want to tell everybody that this tutorial is up I am again I'm sorry I am not a tutorialist and in the future I might look into getting some sort of top-down camera situation um, I apologize oh, this is so darn cute I apologize that this took so long to get up I hope it was worth the wait I wish you luck in your paperweight journey um, send me pictures let me know what you do what pieces you're putting under glass and shoot me any questions that you may have again I am sure that I left some things out but I'm human so um check back with me keep me in the loop take care happy crafting good luck and I'll talk to you guys later